Maybe I should talk into the microphone. Hi, uh, my name is Celia. I'm going to talk about um, what's the thing about health IT. And this is um, a tweet size summary of me. Uh, as it says there, I'm a registered nurse uh, and a health mathematician. And I've spent most of the last 10 years uh, arguing healthcare informatics, uh, which is super fun and also a great challenge. And I'm going to talk to you about, um, about that today. Um, I usually do talks, talks, sorry, talks like this for other healthcare people. Um, this is only the second time that I've done one for mostly techies. Um, so I apologize in advance if I use too much healthcare jargon. I'm trying not to do it. Um, but if you hear a word that you don't understand, uh, please raise, up, uh, raise your hand and I'll try to explain what I'm talking about. So here we go. Um, why isn't healthcare doing things just like the banks? Uh, and this is the question that comes up the most when talking to non-healthcare people about health healthcare IT. <coughs> Sorry, uh, we've had electronic health records for about thir 30 years now, but we still don't really have the solutions that we want to. Um, they don't do what we want them to do, and they definitely don't talk to each other. Um, and during that same time, banks have gone from paper bank books to fully electronic mortgage uh, applications. And of course, also signing your mortgage, which is um, great uh, as a bank uh, customer, but we're not really there in healthcare IT. And I'm sure you've um, experienced that when you visit a, visit a hospital or your doctor's office, they don't really have the information that they need to. And often they spend a lot of time on data entry and also um, they don't really um, have a good overview of you as a patient. Um, so, but why isn't healthcare just doing like the banks? So, I'm not actually going to talk about the fact that, at least in Norway, the healthcare system is really fragmented. Um, and just as a super quick illustration, um, this is the Norwegian public sector, all of it. Um, and these are the 24 hospital and pharmacy trusts uh, in four regional health authorities. Um, and these are the 18 counties uh, who run dental care and hundreds of municipalities um, who run nursing homes, ho community care, and thousands of GP offices. And the lowest level boss of all of them is the prime minister um, <laughs> or the king. I'm not, exact, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm just going to leave that hanging there. Uh, I'm also not going to talk about the fact that healthcare has loads and loads of legacy. Um, but I'm going to give a super quick uh, real world example from a German colleague. Um, this is an actual clinical system. It's used in uh, German hospitals and it looks really, really uh, old fashioned, but that's what it looks like. Um, this is used to track vital observations, medications and procedures and labs for actual real patients. Uh, and if this doesn't work, people could die. This is its database. And these are examples of its information model. And you might not be able to read this, but on, on the left hand side there, um, there are a lot of replicated blood pressures. Um, and they're all intended to mean the same thing. And this is one single query to try and get all of those blood pressures. So if you want to get all the blood pressures, this is the kind of query that you have to write. Um, and within a single hospital, there are hundreds of similar systems to this, each with their own multiple local definitions of everything. And this situation is replicated for every single hospital. So this is a lot of fun to deal with. Another issue with healthcare, uh, and this is something that's it's often quite difficult to get through to tech people, is the difference, difference in business processes um, between healthcare and some other domains like, for example, banking. Because banking happens here or somewhere like it. Um, the main business processes are mostly computers talking to each other or even to themselves, right? Um, while healthcare ex almost exclusively happens here. True, you can have some some um, uh, level of, of remote um, um, appointments now, right? Um, but that's just another modality. Healthcare business processes in their most basic forms are people interacting with each other or sometimes with themselves. Um, and there's usually uh, some more or less explicitly defined um, goals and more or less uh, well-defined idea about what's um, what will happen in between the start and the goal. 
Uh, but unexpected stuff can and will happen um, at any time. And in this kind of process, the computer just really has to try and, and um, uh, keep up with what's going on in, in the real world. And in that respect, it's sort of similar to a tool that I used to get here today. Because I don't know where anything is in Oslo. Uh, so I use Google Maps on my phone. And turn-by-turn -turn navigation is also a process uh, support system where the main business process happens in Meetspace, right? Um, and if I walk down Stenasgata instead of uh, Nigata, what does it do? <coughs> Sorry. Um, it recalculates and it shows me the new path to my destination, right? Um, and healthcare process support needs to work in the same way as this. But unfortunately, healthcare processes uh, are a bit more complex than a path on a map. And there's no re really no healthcare GPS that can tell the computer and allow it to automatically follow everything that's going on. Um, so that's um, an issue there. But what I'm going to spend the rest of the talk on is the healthcare information itself. But why would we spend time talking about information? Because it's so dull and its political appeal is at best questionable. So why, do, why don't we just get some AI and analytics platforms and machine learning and make things better? And the problem is, of course, that to be able to do anything with things like big data, um, you need to be in control of your little data first. And in healthcare, that means detailed data about the patients and their journeys through life. So <clears throat> I'm going to read this to you. You might not be able to read it in the back. Um, in attempting to arrive at the truth, I've applied everywhere for information, but in scarcely an instance have I been able to obtain hospital records fit for any purpose of comparison. If they could be obtained, they would enable us to decide many other questions beside the one alluded to. They would show subscribers how their money was being spent, what amount of good was really being done with it, or whether the money was not doing mischief rather than good. So, a challenge to you, who said this? And as a little clue, when did they said, say this? Anyone? No hands, okay. So that, this is from another uh, 19th century uh, English uh, aristocrat woman, uh, Florence Nightingale, um, who wrote this in 1863. Uh, as part of a book, um, and of course, uh, Florence Nightingale was the pioneer of modern nursing and also a statistician. Um, she uh, popularized the use of polar maps, I think, to, to visualize that statistics. Um, so yeah, this is not a new problem, um, although we may or may not have messed it up further since we started using electronic records. So why is this so difficult? Um, for one thing, healthcare is about life and death. If you have information about, if you don't have uh, or if you have, have uh, the wrong information about a patient's allergies, they could die from that. You could kill them. So that is, that's an issue. Um, so who in here remembers Lotus 1, 2, 3? Okay, so that's like three of five hands. Um, they were the absolute marking, uh, market leader in spreadsheets in, until the early 1990s. Um, then Excel came along. So. In healthcare, we have to keep your data from before you're born until after you're dead. And that's quite a long time, and especially when you're talking about computer systems. Um, we will have to assume that it me also means that we have to be able to read and understand your data, not just keep it somewhere. Um, and much of the data we're generating today is stored in vendor-specific and proprietary formats. And we can assume that many of the software vendors and uh, systems that we're using today won't be around in 30 years' time from now. So how do you access data that's tightly bound to a dead vendor? I don't know, do any of you? This doesn't seem to be a good solution to that. So I'm sorry for exposing you to this orange face this early in the morning. Um, but he actually did say this. Uh, and it's kind of sort of symptomatic. Uh, but what do, what do we do know, uh, since um, although we obviously didn't know that healthcare was complicated, is that healthcare has a large number of concepts and they also change all the time. And it's growing in breadth um, when new areas of knowledge are discovered or become relevant. And it um, um, grows in depth when more detailed knowledge is uh, discovered or becomes relevant. And it's also growing in complexity when new relationships between knowledge that you already have um, becomes are discovered or becomes relevant and healthcare information has to grow with this 
Um, and this means that you can't really rely on fixed standards uh, at all. But it is easy to underestimate the complexity of healthcare information. For example, it's not, it's not about making a model of the human body. Now, that's extremely complex in itself, and we tap into that, but that's really not what healthcare is about. Healthcare is the collective processes of caring for sick people. And this has loads of abstract concepts. It has a lot of psychosocial stuff, and this is really, really hard to pin down. Let's look at an example. Um, this is um, a lot of different uh, ways of um, talking about uh, medication timing. Um, and like you can see in those examples, uh, medication timing requires at least 19 separate axes um, of timing for it to be properly ma machine readable and actionable. Um, and then there's dosing and mixtures and increasing and tapering doses and so on. Um, so yeah, this is just one example of, of uh, actual health information that's um, quite complicated. Um, there's another uh, area that's particularly interesting is clinical uh, examinations and they're fractal. And of course, I don't mean fractal in the mathematical sense, but it's like the visualization of a Mandelbrot set, broad set like this, um, where you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in and there's just more detail, more and more and more and more. And I'm going to try to stop this now because otherwise you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Um, yeah. For example, in the context of a clinical encounter, walking into the room to see your patient, you may be able to tell their approximate age, gender, uh, whether their skin is normal or jaundiced or cyanotic or pale, um, the odor of the room, uh, are they lying down, sitting or standing, and their approximate level of consciousness. And then when you walk up to them in the context of, uh, still in the context of the room level overview, uh, when you get Close to them, you can examine the skin temperature, uh, odor, spoken language. And then in the context of that close overview, um, you can uh, examine, for example, a wound. Where is the wound? Um, where, what is its depth, its color, its smell, and the quality of the skin around the edges? And then you can zoom in more. In the context of, of that particular wound, um, you can examine the wound bed. Is there granulation tissue? Is there a necrosis? Is there exudate? And then uh, in the context of the wound bed, you can take a bacterial swab for, for incubation. And then in the context of that swab, you can do a genetic analysis of that bacteria to find out exactly which strain it is. So this show, just shows, shows that the detail just keeps on going. Um, and this will probably stop here, but there are, there are other examples with several more levels. And finally, since people move around lots, um, we need to agree on what healthcare information means everywhere and not just locally. Um, so if I stumble across a badly parked scooter uh, this morning on my way here and fractured my leg, all my records would be in Bergen and not here at the hospital here. Um, but more significantly, when people get old and they actually start their proper careers as patients, they move off to Spain. And what happens then? Another example, and if a clinical record says this, what does it mean? Come on, what does it mean? Yeah, in the back. I can't really hear what you're saying, um, but I, I don't have a lot of time, so I'll just keep going. <laughs> but good try, thanks. Um, so a lot of people will think this means that this uh, this pa patient has diabetes, right? That's a normal thing to, to uh, assume. But it could also mean that, that they have um, diabetes in their family, it can mean that they have a risk of diabetes, it can mean that uh, they don't have diabetes, you've excluded it, or it can mean that they have it. And the point of this example is that healthcare information depends strongly on the intended semantics um, at the moment of recording. Uh, and if in sufficient contextual information is, isn't captured and maintained simultaneously, uh, the value of the information is very limited. So how do you think we've handled this complexity until now? Free text, yep. And free text is really good uh, because it's extremely flexible, it's easy to support and it's easy to learn, um, but we really can't use it for anything. Uh, in practice, information is dead within a couple of days. And of course, some systems do have a certain level of structure, uh, but it's mostly limited to within a single system from a single vendor. And when you switch vendors, you lose a lot of it. So um, 
We also tried p purchasing systems that are considered the best for their particular area um, of expertise, the widely known best of breed approach. Um, and this hasn't really worked well at all. Um, in reality, uh, a lot of information needs to float between different areas and they don't, they're not really limited to one. And systems built, built in this way tend to um, uh, define all the information in their own particular way, um, which doesn't really match anyone else's. And um, so they tend to uh, be really bad at communicating with other systems around them. Then we tried the other end of the scale, the so-called mega suite approach. And that's, of course, one huge system that's intended to do everything, um, except they never do. Um, and they tend to be extremely slow to change. And then there's a lock-in situation, uh, which is even worse in this uh, situation than for the best of breed approach. So that sounds pretty bad, doesn't it? Um, luckily, we ha do have some ways we're working to try and change this mess. One of them is separating the information from the implementations and vendors. And this can be done using open uh, specifications and standards to build open platforms. Um, and using some kind of multi-level uh, mod um, multi modeling, um, which separates the technical um, implementation from the clinical information de definitions. And um, most of the standardization work, uh, both for the technical standards and for information definitions, and need to be done um, more like an open source um, um, open source software project than as a traditional standards development process. Because when you develop traditional standards, you sort of get everyone in the room and decide on a document, and then you ballot it, and then it stays the same for five years, and that doesn't really work for this kind of uh, um, information. And of course, none of this is any way a silver bullet. There'll still be lots of hard work and headaches, um, but that's, there's definitely hope that these newer approaches will uh, be better suited to the problem than what we've done before. And there's one important caveat. In healthcare, structuring information is not in itself a goal. Uh, it's difficult and it's really expensive to do, and often more cumbersome for users, and it can lead to, lead to loss of important nuances in uh, clinical information. So structuring should be done where it has clear value and it should alway, always be possible to add nuance to structured information using free text. Um, and at the end, I'd like to say that even though it's demanding, it's also extremely rewarding to work within a domain where functional versus non-functional systems can mean the difference between life and death for patients. Um, and we need all the brilliant minds that we can get so if you're considering a career in health IT, go for it. Thank you. <laughs>